Hey, Kelly, how are you? I'm great, Bo. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Have you heard about Anchor? You mean that big, heavy thing that you throw off the side of a boat? No, silly. The podcast app that helps you distribute your podcast episodes to a bunch of major websites. Wow, that's super cool. Yeah, it's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Ooh, I love less work. That sounds fantastic. And you can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Ooh, I also love to make money. Yeah, so just download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Do it. Do it. Precisely. Two best buds. Precisely. Drinking beer and talking about stuff. Precisely. Bo and Tony, precisely, playing and reviewing games, precisely. precisely, what's up, Tony? What's up, Bo? Tell him, man, how are you? Good, man, enjoying my week. Me too. Yeah. I was outside, um, mostly all of today, out hiking and stuff. A lot of fun, beautiful out, brought the Game Boy. Yeah, it was definitely a great day. Sun was out all day. Yeah, like 70, 75. Very fun. So, what's new with you? Oh, not much. You know, we're getting into spring a little bit, and I'm liking that. I'm liking it, too. And just the normal stuff. Been playing a little bit of A Link to the Past. Just a little? Well, a good bit, I would say. Yeah. I think you might be farther than I am. Maybe a little bit. But we'll get to that. So this is Precisely Podcast number 14. This is a podcast where we drink beer and talk about video games and occasionally some random stuff. So what beer are you drinking? I have a Stone Delicious IPA. Is it delicious? It's not. It's yeah, it's good, but it's not delicious is not the word I would use, but it's all right. Describe it to me. Uh, It's mellow. That's maybe a little hazy, a little fruity, but it's probably just a standard IP- IPA, I'd say. Okay. I'm drinking uh, Flying Dog Night School Hazy IPA, and it's pretty damn good. It's a good New England-style IPA. Not overly fruity, though, but definitely hazy through the bottle. But solid beer, nonetheless. So, Tony... Yeah, what have you been playing this week? I know you've been playing a couple other uh, games. I know you got a new one, right, This just this week? Yeah, I got a bunch of games, actually, in the mail. Um, been playing more Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze with the wife. She is hooked on it, and we've unlocked almost all the secret levels in it. We're probably 95% complete on that game, which is insane for how hard it is. And uh, I sort of gave up on it. I was like, I'm done playing this, babe. So she started her own uh, file to play by herself. And it's crazy to see her improvement with it. So with that, I bought Donkey Kong Returns for the Nintendo Wii off my buddy Deadbit Villain. Shout out to you, Deadbit. He hooked me up with a really good price for a loose disc and like a custom case for it. So looking forward to playing that with her. Um, besides that, I got Axiom Verge for the Wii U from Limited Run Games. And Limited Run is notorious for being very, very slow on uh, getting games to you. Usually you pre-order them and it will take six to eight months until you actually get the game. Wow, that's a long time to wait. Long time. So long that you usually forget that you ordered games and then finally it comes in the mail or you see someone get it on Instagram before you and you're like, oh shit, I ordered that too. But this game came real quick and I'm guessing it's because it's for the Wii U and they still have all the machinery that makes Wii U games and they're not backed up making any Wii U games. So it literally came within like two weeks of ordering it, which was really cool. Um, have not cracked it open yet. I wanted to, but I played it on my PS Vita, and wow, it's a really fun game. Have you ever played Metroid? Yeah, I have. Uh, Super Nintendo Metroid, like 2D Metroid. Yeah. Okay, so it's it's pretty much a mock up of Metroid, 
It's a 2D side scroller platforming game where you find new items, upgrades to advance to different areas. You're like this young guy that like gets sucked into this world and he's like, where am I? He like wakes up in this like cyborg world and he's like, what am I doing? He like finds a gun that's like attached to his arm, pretty much like Samus and, uh, in Metroid. And you just jump around, find more power ups. I got pretty far in it and it made me be like, should I, you know, hold on to the Wii U version before opening it? I probably will open it, but not quite yet. I I only open my games when I'm ready to play them, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. And I don't have the time to invest into it, but with the PS Vita, because I can take that anywhere with me, I'd be more than willing to play that. Because we've been playing a lot of Link to the Past, and uh, that's been taking up a lot of time. So with that, I've been sort of needing a break from it, something different. I got my VR hooked up back again, like something got wonky with it and it wasn't working for my wife. So she asked me to fix it, figured it out. It was just, uh, the camera needed recalibrated. So I played some beat saber the other day. Super fun. They released new tracks too, with like a DLC package. So I was listening to those. I didn't purchase them, but got to play a few rounds and it just felt really good. Beating up blocks, slashing blocks, Red and blue blocks. Yeah, that's a fun game. It's really easy to get into, I think. Yeah. But I can't play too much of it, maybe 15 minutes. You're scared of VR. Yeah. So I also played this other game called Res. Have you ever heard heard of Res? No, you told me about it a little bit. So if you're scared of Beat Saber, Res will scare the shit out of you. Well, I'm not scared of Beat Saber. I'm scared of getting sucked into a virtual reality world and not eating and dying. I think you'll be fine. Eventually, you're going to be like, I need to go pee, and I can't pee in this virtual reality world. just wet myself. So, Rez uh, was an original Dreamcast game, and played it on Dreamcast a bunch. Super graphically, it's super crazy. It's all, like, geometric shapes and colors and lines, and the music is, like, thumping 90s techno music. And it's, like, an on-rail shooter. So, what you do is you're character is like in the middle of the screen and you pretty much have to block all projectiles coming at him so you see these projectiles coming and you use your control stick and wave over them while holding x and then you can release x and you can target up to eight characters so every time you target a character you release x it fires kills them usually in one shot um So it's fun with it, like with the graphics, with the music. It's just like going bonkers at you the whole time. It's like if you could see sound waves, it's just sound waves all around you. So every time you fire a projectile, it makes music too, almost like Tetris Effect, which is the same producer and director, maker of that game, also made Rez. So really fun game. I got up to Zone 2, which is... 10 levels per zone probably took like maybe like a half an hour to an hour and my head started hurting. I was like, I need to take the VR set off. Like this is just visually too much going on, but a lot of fun looking forward to playing it. Recommend it to anyone with VR. Um, or if you don't and you have a dreamcast, get it for dreamcast because it's just as fun of a game, but the VR is insane. There's actually a mode in the beginning before you play where it's like if you're not experienced with VR or if you get motion sick uh, put it on this setting and then the other one was like if you're experienced with VR if you like crazy visuals I'm like yeah give me that one went on that one and man my eyes were just wide like probably didn't blink for the whole half an hour (laughs) just shit is crazy so I'll show that to you after we're done recording yeah I'd be interested to see that definitely it's insane and I'll make sure I feed you in case you stay on it too long. <laughs> I but I, it. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't think you'll want to play it too long because it just gets crazy. A little overwhelming, maybe with all the visuals. Yeah. So have you played uh, Super Smash Brothers lately? No, I haven't. Probably not for a month since the last time we played. Yeah, when we were playing online. Gotcha. So my one buddy came over uh, earlier this week and. 
he's like, what game you want to play? And I'm like, let's play Super Smash Brothers. And he's been playing with his roommate for a while, and I haven't played in a while myself. And uh, he was kicking my ass. We were, like, playing against two other computers, not on a team. But I was like, let's go online. Let's do, like, team battles online. So we go on, and we just keep getting our asses kicked. And we noticed that every team had one Ganondorf on it, the dude from Zelda, like the evil guy. Yeah. And uh, he he's an ass smasher. <laughs> he has such power moves that are slow power moves, but if you get hit, you're getting knocked out right away. You're getting knocked off the stage. So we're like, let's both be Ganondorf and fight other people and see if we can win that way. Well, sure enough, our first battle was against two Ganondorfs. Wow. <laughs> so it was four Ganondorfs on the screen, all like similar colors, too. And we're like, who's who? That's but, so confusing, man. So I can confusing. barely keep track of my character when they're all different. Right. Um, but we ended up winning that one, and we played like 10 more rounds and won most of them. So yeah, Ganondorf's my man. He's dope. You should definitely unlock him if you haven't yet and play him. I also unlocked uh, Piranha Plant, which was like a free like DLC character that if you like registered your game or something by a certain time, you would unlock him. Do you remember that? Did you unlock him? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think so. You had to do something weird like where you had to go into the game's like data and redeem something. And then it was coming like months later, but you had to redeem it like two months before it came out. Either way, Piranha Plant's a pretty cool character. His skills are dope. He's more on the like close range side of fighting, but really cool character. So we should definitely play some of that together too. Yeah, definitely. I always like Smash Bros. Hell yeah. Trying to smash bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then, you know, playing A Link to the Past and just like getting frustrated, which we will talk about. I was like, I need something easy going, and I remembered a game I picked up a while ago that I got in the mail from Limited Run Games, which is called West and Loathing, and my one buddy, shout out to you, 8-Bit Andy, he uh, told me, he was like, Bo, you need to play this game, like, stop having it on your shelf, open it up, and play it, he's like, you'll love it, and goddamn, he was right, West and Loathing, you saw a little bit of me playing it when you got here, right? Yeah, but is it West of Loathing? Yes, West of Loathing. Okay. Yeah, you're reading the box right now. Yeah. <laughs> what was I saying? In West and Loathing. Oh, yeah. No, West of Loathing. So it's a stick figure game. Graphically, you're not going to be amazed by it. But the humor behind it, like it's very text-based, and you have to read a shit ton. So if you don't like reading, it's not for you. But if you want like a super laid-back turn-based puzzle RPG game, I highly recommend it. So you choose your character in the beginning by doing, like, uh, one of those carnival, like, shooting games, like, where, like, the ducks go in a row. Yeah. And you choose your character, like, either male or female, but then it, like, switches the names. And I'm like, well, what name do I want to be? Like, each one has, like, a bounty that's more, which I don't really know what that means at the time and still don't really but I ended up with uh, Dick Rogers, and I was like, that's a strong name. It's a strong Dick Powerful, name. very yeah, powerful name. Very powerful, very very uh, masculine, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I chose my class, which one was like a cow puncher. Uh, one was a bean slinger, which okay. is like a mage type character. Cow puncher is like your warrior. And then I am a snake oiler. That's what I chose. And the snake oiler can like make potions. He can throw snakes at you or smack snakes at you, and you get the enemy gets poisoned. Then comes in handy. Sort of wish I would have chose one of the other ones though. Um, but so far, like the game's amazing. You literally want to go talk to everything, investigate every little thing. It's all hand drawn graphics, stick figure graphics. But like. It starts off where you're in your bedroom and on the back wall it says use L trigger to move. So I moved to that wall where it was written and it says 
this poster appeared here one night. And I'm like, what? Like, that's so cool. Like, like everything that's built into the game has something like funny about it. It's like, how did this poster get here? Who cares? So I walked to the bookcase and I started reading all the books and it gave me a new title every time. And they were all like funny little titles. So I just kept pressing a button, smashing that. And finally, I read a book called Walking Stupid. I was able to open my inventory and actually read it. Like, I took the book out, and it was the only book I was able to take out and keep. So I read it, and I learned how to walk stupid. So now, wherever I walk, I'm, like, doing a crab walk. I'm getting on my butt and doing hands. Doing a cowboy walk at one point. Cowboy walk, it. like, ballerina walk. Like, you know how, like, a dog, like, rubs its butt on the ground? Walk like yeah. that. Like, it's so funny. But really, like, you just do missions for every character that you talk to for the most part. Like, I was in the bar, and there's a spittoon area where I could investigate it. And I'm like, yeah, sure, investigate it, because like any RPG, you want to, like, look for stuff. So I'm investigating it, and uh, it's like, do you want to investigate more? And it's like, yeah, I do. And it's like, now you're on your hands and knees. You look really dumb in this bar and people are starting to look at you. Do you want to stick your hand in this gross tobacco juice? And it's like, yeah, I do. It's like, oh, uh, it feels like it's burning your skin off. What are you going to do? And it's like, reach around more, give up. I'm like, reach around more. Ended up finding a ring that like gave me like better defense and stuff. I was like, cool. You know, it didn't do anything to me. But then I went to a different bar. There was another spittoon. And it was like, do you want to investigate this? And then, like, in quotes, it was like, well, you already investigated the last one. You're pretty gross anyway. You haven't showered yet, so you might as well investigate this one, too. Yeah. So it, it's cool that it remembers, like, what you've done in the game, too. Definitely. But there's a bunch of puzzles that, like, you know, I had to scratch my head on where you have to get all three of these, like, criminals to be, like, in front of a jail that's not a jail it's like a cardboard cutout jail like a wooden cutout like from a hollywood set and then you go to the back of it and you have to talk to certain ones you have to move around to make the other ones move so you get them all in one spot and then you slam the wood down on them like the whole jail like falls on them and you ring them up take them to the sheriff get paid do all that but really like the whole game you're just trying to go out west more and by going out west there's like a mini map or like a main map i guess and you find new locations wherever you're walking to but every time you're walking something happens and it's almost like the oregon trail where it's like oh like you found like a treasure chest on the side of the road do you want to open it like of course i do you know or a skeleton comes and attacks you do you want to fight it or surrender? So it's a lot of fun. Highly recommend it to everyone that has a Switch. Um, I think it's for PC as well, but I don't believe it's on PS4 or Xbox, but I might be wrong about that. I kind of want to buy it just for the box. Box is dope. So I got the collector's edition. It comes with like a funny looking badge, like a sheriff's badge. It says like Sherf on it, uh, yeah. bandana, uh, bunch of different little stuff poster like of the map pretty cool um but yeah probably gonna just keep all that stuff in the box because where the hell am i gonna put it maybe i'll dress up as him for halloween bro that would be a good costume as a stick figure i don't i don't know if anyone will get it besides you but yeah so tony i got a topic that's that i've been thinking about lately all right since i'm done with all the games that I played this week. Have you played any games? No, I mean, I pretty much just played uh, Link to the Past. You know, I've been stuck on that. I'm trying to beat it before you so I can feel accomplished. Oh, yeah? So that's my main goal right now. Well, I'm wondering if you're farther than me. We'll see. So my topic is, have you saved anyone's lives? Uh, I was talking to my boss, and he got, like, a bunch of, like treats the other day from this old lady down the street from the job and uh i was like you know who is this lady like why do you have all these like pieces of cake like different like flavors of cake all these different cookies muffins and he was like well her son really hates us 
but she moved in with her son because she's old and we found her like at the old job site like lying on the ground like passed out and they like brought her back to the office they called 911 and they saved her life and when they moved to this new location they they were like going and talking to neighbors saying hey like we're new here just so you know like we have a salvage yard like nice to meet you all this and she opened the door uh on my boss and she was like oh my gosh like it's you like you saved my life and I didn't know you worked here but this is great I was like oh wow like I remember a moment where I saved someone's life and it was also an old lady where I was walking to the mall got out of my car uh walking in the parking lot and this old lady was like unconscious under a car like a parked car like she must have slipped and rolled under or what rolled under like half of her body was like under the car wow so I like run up to her uh, with my friend that was with me and I'm like hello are, are you okay like sh- not saying anything like she like couldn't talk I was like a little freaked out so like I picked her up a little bit um, so she could like rest on my chest so she just wasn't like laying on the cement and what bothered me a lot was that a lot of people were walking by and saw this scene and it's like this isn't a regular scene like this isn't my grandma you know like Like, this lady has fallen, and people are just looking at us walking by, and I'm like, man, society's messed up. Yeah, no one stops to help or anything. Yeah, everyone's so... Too busy. Like, they care about themselves, you know? And it was sad, but I called 911. They came, and they got her. She, like, was able to, like, say her name by then and, you know, say where she lived. But she didn't know how she got there and stuff. And I don't know if she lived or not, you know, I, I hope she did, but at the time, like, I saved her life, which was crazy. Um, another time was my ex-girlfriend's dad. He uh, wasn't the greatest of guys, rest in peace. Um, he's passed away now, but he took, like, some type of pill, like a painkiller, like a really strong nar- n- narcotic, and was drinking a lot of beer on it and we were outside like hanging out playing out on this farm that he owns and we go inside and he's just like sweating up a storm couldn't talk I'm like yelling at him and he was like so unconscious I'm throwing water on him he's not doing anything just sweating and I'm like like checked his heart rate was hardly even going really Called 911, and we're in, like, Perry motherfucking county, like, bumfuck nowhere. And surprisingly, an ambulance came within, like, five minutes. Yeah. Like, it amazed me. But they are like, thank God you called. Like, he, he would have died. And he eventually died, like, a year or two later from a heart attack. He was a heavy drinker. Um, but it, it, it was a good feeling, like, knowing that I saved his life, you know? Yeah, you took initiative and did the right thing. Yeah, pretty much. So how about you, Tony? Have you saved anyone's life? Uh, no, I don't. Th- I can't say I've ever saved anyone's life, not directly. Um, you saved my life once, Tony. Yeah, when was this? When we were out kayaking last year, and uh, you and our buddy Dave like went through this like little chute, like there was oh, all these yeah. fallen trees, and it was like right at a bridge, and with, the like, water was real fast, the real fast, was rough. real little tight stream that you had to like yeah it was just like the width of the kayak yeah and you could every it was a at a bridge and the rest of the bridge was dammed up with uh logs and logs yeah yeah because there was a bunch of rain before yeah storms and uh you went in there dave went through it fine i'm like all right i'm gonna go my sister's like i haven't kayaked enough so i'm gonna walk the kayak out and I was like, okay, that's smart, but I've been kayaking as much as Tony has, if not more. And I went with it, and I went a little sideways from the current and got sucked under one of the logs, and my kayak tipped and just went. And I got plummeted by all these rocks and water, and I was just fucked up. Like, I lost my vape pen. Luckily, my cell phone was in an otter box and it was safe and my keys were safe. Thank God. 
but I lost something else too. I was just like, God damn it. Like your this... whole kayak, your shoes. Oh yeah. I lost my shoes. Yeah. Yep, some Nikes. The kayak floated 500 feet down the Creek. Luckily. Yeah. Someone else was there and stopped it for us and stopped it. But it was the first and only time that I've ever flipped. And it just felt so shitty. Like I was just like, felt so defeated. Cause you know, up until then we were having an awesome time. It was great weather outside, hanging out with friends and family, and it happened, and you were able to, like, help me up or get me out, like, walking on the rocks without shoes sucked, you know, just, like, being plummeted by the water, like, my 200-plus pounds just, like, getting moved by this water because of how fast it was. Yeah, and it was only probably a little bit past our knees, but it was really, uh, the current was strong. So strong. So... Yeah, I I learned my lesson on that. I think that was our last kayak session last year, right? Yeah, last summer. It was a bad one to end on. (laughs) Well, it was fine. It was fun. Yeah, Um, but I felt like you sort of saved my life. You you helped me through that one. You brought me back up, Tony, even though I was like really down in the dumps that it happened. Yeah. Yeah. It happens, man. It does happen. So thank you for that. I'll tell you what, though. It's not easy to get a kayak that has been flipped. That's filled with water. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the toughest things you'll probably ever have to do in your yeah. life. Because it weighs like a thousand pounds. Yeah. Though. Yeah. It sucks. Everything's weightless in water until it's a kayak filled with water. Yeah. <laughs> oh, another time I saved someone's life was my mom's when I was younger. I remember like watching TV. She was in the kitchen and she'd always be like, Bo, come here. Like, I need you to do something. But she's like, Bo. And, like, I heard something in her voice, and I, like, usually I would be, like, wait one second, like, wait until a commercial, I'll be out. And I heard something in her voice, and I ran to the kitchen, and her whole sweater, like, half of her sweater caught on flames because she reached over this candle, I guess, to grab something. Yeah. And half of it caught on flames. I immediately, like, I'm, like, 10 years old, 12 years old, immediately, like, grabbed a hand towel and started, like, beating her arm with it. And the flames went out on that side and then ignited the other side. Wow. And it was like a new sweater, so like it had all those like I guess chemicals still on it or whatever. Like it, it was just like in flames. Luckily it didn't catch her hair on fire. But I was able to get the rest out and she was just like, Oh my god, Bo, like you saved my life. And like I just reacted as a kid, like, what are you gonna do? Like you can't panic. Like that's family. Like, even if it was a stranger, like I would have done the same thing. But, like, I was like, oh, my God, I did. And, like, I remember my knees, like, shaking so hard. And, like, I had to, like, sit down because (laughs) I was, like, going to fall over. Like, just, like, my heart was racing. I was like, oh, my gosh, like, this was crazy. And my mom still remembers that. So, shout out to you, Mom. Definitely get a uh, big rush of adrenaline from something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Also, I need to shout out some people that are near and dear to my heart the listing trailer at work shout out to you guys (laughs) this one's for you (laughs) so you want to you want to get to the main topic um yeah i mean do we want to talk about what we have planned coming up for the next oh yeah you want to talk about it so we want to do a giveaway for you guys for you know the people that have really been supporting us and um you know helping us grow our fans, our listeners, the essentially it's a limited giveaway because you have to do something for us, essentially. Yep. So what we're going to do is enter everyone who buys a Precisely Podcast t-shirt. Or hoodie. Or hoodie. We're going to do, you get two entries for a hoodie and one entry for a t-shirt. And we're going to run this for a month. So, what is it? It's May 11th? May, Saturday, May 11th, we will announce the winner. Yeah. So, you have a month to buy a t-shirt or hoodie off of eBay. All you do is search Precisely Podcasts on eBay, and you'll see both the t-shirt and the hoodie. We have multiple colors, um, all the sizes. So, order one, get it. I will mark your name down. I'll message you on eBay and make sure that I have the right name for you. So, anyone that has ordered t-shirts or or hoodies already, you're automatically entered for this giveaway. So yep. what what are we giving away? 
Uh, we are giving away Spyro Super Pack for the Game Boy Advance. So and it's two Spyro games. Yep, it's two Spyro games, and it's um, 95% sealed in box. Yeah. Uh, and it's complete. It goes for a pretty penny. It's complete in box. Practically sealed. There's a, a slit at the top of the seal on it, but never, never been fully opened or played. The box is in really good condition as well. Yeah, I'm holding it right now. And it's, There's not a scratch on it. Right yeah, now. it's a pretty uncommon game because it's one of those super pack, value pack games where it's two games in one. So what are the titles of the Spyro games? It's Spyro Season Ice and Spyro Season Flame. So yeah, if you guys want to enter, if you have any questions about it, all you got to do is go to eBay, search Precisely Podcast, and order a t-shirt. So... You're helping us grow, and you're going to be entered into this giveaway for an awesome, uh, complete in box Game Boy Advance game. Technically, too. <laughs> so, let's get to Zelda Link to the Pass. Let's do it. I think last week we left off about the Dark Woods. Maybe we're getting the Master Sword. We yeah, got the Master so Sword. We both got the Master Sword. Uh, it was a lovely, lovely feeling. I forget exactly what I said, but I felt like the game was over <laughs> once you get the Master Sword. Yeah, I remember you saying you stopped shortly after that, maybe, Yeah. when you played before. When I've played in the past, yeah. Yeah, you know, though, it doesn't... Getting the Master Sword in this is not like uh, Breath of the Wild, where... It, you have to uh, do so much. Yeah, I feel like it is really a lot more worth it in the Breath of the Wild, but also... It's like later on in the game. This is just the beginning of the game, basically, once you get the Master Sword. Yeah. So we got the Master Sword. Uh, what did you do after that? I did a bunch of searching around. Yeah, I think I did. I definitely did some searching around also. I went up uh, northeast to try and get the flippers that you told me about. Yeah. And I got there, and I think you need like 500 rupees. I had like 490 or something. Oh, you're so close. Yeah, and I went around... And there's nowhere up there to get rupees. So I had to because go like, it's all like fish people yeah. where if a ruby would fall, it's falling in the water. Yeah, well, I think you just get bombs from them or something. Oh, uh, okay. Or uh, maybe nothing. I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so I had to go the whole way back down. Oh, that sucks. Eventually, I went back up and got them. Yeah, it was a pain, man. Yeah. So I went back to the witch's house because I remembered I dropped off a mushroom off at her house. And there's, once you go inside the house, there's magic powder. Did you ever do that? Did you get magic powder? No, I didn't get the magic powder yet. It definitely comes in handy, and it unlocks special things. So you can sprinkle it on anything, and it will, like, change enemies into, like, different-looking enemies, like, funnier-looking enemies. Sometimes it will change enemies into fairies, which is super helpful. Like, I noticed in the most recent dungeon that I was in, you know those like little like red uh, cross looking things that like bounce off the walls. Yeah. So if you can get close enough to one of those and sprinkle the powder on, that's an automatic fairy, which is awesome and comes so much in handy. You know when you get to the later dungeons and castles. Um. So to the top right of the witch's hut, like you said, is the water trail that you walk up. You talk to that giant fish. You get the the flippers, and you can swim, which is amazing. So I swam around a lot, and I you know, went around all the waterways. I remember vaguely uh, going through a waterfall, so I checked all the waterfalls that I could. I eventually got one uh, to the far left of where you get the flippers, and you go through the waterfall, and it's like, it looks like a fairy pond, but there's no fairy there. Okay. And it's like, do you want to, like, throw in some coins? And you can throw in, like, five or 20 at a time. I'm like, well, let's throw in 20. Threw it in. And it's like, your happiness went up by 20. So I walked out, came back in. I'm like, I, I got to throw in more. Did it five more times or four more times. Got up to 100 rubies. And a fairy popped out, this big-ass fairy, and she's like, oh, thank you, you know, for your support. Do you want to upgrade your arrows or bombs? And I was like, well, I want to upgrade my bombs because I have less of those than arrows. 
So I did it a bunch of times. I went through all my rubies because one thing that's nice about any Zelda game is there's so many rubies, you know, and there's a decent amount of stuff to spend it on. But like something like this, I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to spend it on this. So I think I got up to like, I was able to hold 35 bombs until I ran out of rubies. Um, then after that, I went to the castle to do the epic battle. Did you do anything in between? Um, I did. I went and I drained the swamp. Okay. Um, but I don't know. I got a fish and I guess you're supposed to do something with the fish, but I couldn't figure it out. Uh, you can take it to the merchant that sold you the original glass jar. Oh, really? Yeah, and you do oh, that. Oh, but you have to make it the whole way there with the fish in your hand or something. Yeah, so you can get attacked and the fish will fall out and you can just like kill the people around you and pick up the fish again. Okay. Yeah. I think I got attacked once and then I like gave up on it. Okay. It it gives you like hearts and rubies. I don't think it's like anything like too special. I I remember doing it and I was like, "Oh, that wasn't really worth it." You know, That like, makes me feel a little bit better then. Yeah, I think it like might have gave me like 50 rubies tops and like just like not heart pieces but like small little hearts that fill up your meter um yeah wasn't much anything else uh no after that i i went to the castle also cool and i mean we've already been in the castle so we knew where to go essentially at least i did you like, yeah i didn't know exactly but it didn't take me very long to figure yeah. it out once i looked at the map so you like go up to the second floor go outside on the balcony and then you use your master sword on that like lit up part where it's blocking you and it opens up that area yeah and then you fight a very very epic fight which I knew what I was doing, so I must have gotten to this part in the past. Um, how about you? Did you know what you were doing? Um, I remember it, it didn't... I got there. I got to the boss my first try, but then I died. And uh, I went back, and I think it only took me a couple tries. Yeah, so this guy's like the main villain of A Link to the Past, it seems like. I forget his name, um, but he's... He's essentially Ganondorf without being Ganondorf. Um, so he he says a bunch of words. He's like, uh, you can't defeat me, blah, blah, blah. And you start fighting, and he has three attacks and one that can really fuck you up, which is the lightning attack, which I told you about. I was like, avoid that at all costs. Yeah. So if he goes to the top center... Move to the left or right right away. Yeah, the corner, so he yeah. can't hit you. Um, but then he fires two different like balls at you, and the white ball that he tosses at you, you can hit back at him, and that's how you can hurt him. Uh, no other attack will hurt him, unfortunately. So you have to wait until he shoots the white ball. You fire it back. It's like a pong game, like a very easy pong game to beat him at. The other one is like a bunch of blue balls that you can just swipe your sword at and they <coughs> they disappear or they like go away from you. Yeah. So I killed him and I got sent to the dark world. And then a very bad thing happened to me because on the dungeon before that, I forgot to get the moon pearl. Uh, so what happened to you? Well, I turned into a bunny. Yeah. The moon pearl prevents you turning into a bunny. Oh, and uh, I couldn't do anything. So I used my mirror. I was like, fuck, I need to go all the way back to Death Mountain and find this moon pearl, which you pretty much have to like go all the way back up the stairs to the boss and then fall down a certain hole to get the moon pearl. Yeah, it's the floor before the boss. Yeah. That you, yeah. So I got it, and I was like, cool. And then I got really confused on what to do next. Because I kept going to the portal um, up top on Death Mountain. And I'm like, alright, now I'm Link. Like, now I can use my sword. And I'm trying to find a way out in the Dark World. And there is none. Like, there's no way to get off of Death Mountain up there that I'm aware of. With the items that I had. Uh, so, 
little lost, little stuck. I'm like, fuck, I messed this up because I didn't get the moon pearl in time. Like, what do I do? I'm actually like looking up facts about it. I'm like, what do you do if you didn't get the moon pearl when you were at Castle 3? And a bunch of people have done it. And a bunch of people were like, fuck, I got to restart the whole game. I'm like, this would suck if I have to do this. Yeah. So I, I was panicky. And then someone was like, no, you're fine. Like, you dumbass. Like, just go back to the castle. I'm like, uh, <laughs> okay. So I went back to the castle. Um, and as soon as I walked, like, close to the castle, I went to the dark world. Oh, really? Yeah. It just, like, transported me to the dark world. Um, yeah, but the whole time I was just, like, freaking out because I thought my game glitched out. But, you know, Nintendo's smart, and they don't make broken games for the most part. Don't quote me on that, but, yeah. Usually they don't, especially a game like Zelda or Mario. So, got to the first dungeon in the Dark World. You got there as well, right? Yes, I did. This one's a bit tricky. Uh, you get to the first mini boss, which were those three pigs, like the red one and the two green ones, and it's easy to kill the green ones, <laughs> um, but the red one was a little difficult. Were you able to figure that out without looking up what to do? Yeah, those aren't the bosses, right? No, but like to me, it was like a mini boss. At least how yeah, frustrating it was. Yeah, well, there's a bunch of them. I think through that dungeon. Yeah, there there's a few of them. Um, yeah, so some go like opposite the way you do. Yeah, and then you gotta yeah get them to walk into your attack or whatever. Yeah, but the red one doesn't get hurt by your sword or anything. So what did you do? Do you remember? Uh, we're talking about like the pig guys, right? Yeah, yeah. There's three of them in a room. Yeah, you can't attack the red one with the sword. At least I couldn't. Yeah, I, I shot them all with arrows. Oh, really? Yeah. So, yeah, essentially, you shoot the arrow, and then you make them walk into it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the green ones, you don't have to. No, the green ones are easy. Um, they don't even attack kill. you. Yeah. yeah. The red one, as soon as you face it, it will fire a fireball at you that, like, takes down, like, two of your hearts, and it sucks. So, I died a few times until I figured out I needed to use the arrows. Um, and then it was fairly easy. Yeah, you might be able to throw a bomb, too. I don't know. I feel like I tried, but then he was still attacking me when I threw the bomb. Yeah. You know? But I'm sure it'd be the same thing. Uh, there is a fairy pond within this castle uh, through, like, a cracked wall. Yep. Were you able to find that? It helped me uh, out a lot. Oh, yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah, I remember yeah. where it is. And uh, I got to the boss of this dungeon, which is like a scorpion-like thing with like a shield mask over its face. Yep. You get the magic hammer in this dungeon, which yeah. can pound like a bunch of different types of blocks down that are blocking your way. But it can also take... It can damage this mask off the final boss of this dungeon. Um, so I use that, but I think I primarily used bombs and threw those at him and stayed very close to his face because it seemed like he only had one attack that I remember, which is like his tail coming out like a scorpion to hit uh, you. He shot fireballs too. Oh, okay. But yeah, it, you did have to stay close to him. Yeah. So I think I had to use the fairies when I beat him. But yeah. I was just kind of in his face, you know, trying to get it done. Yeah, so I got the mask off after a few bombs and like some hammer hits. And then his face is exposed. He has like this green gem on his forehead. And I like started hitting it with the sword, but then he would like run into me and I would get damage from that. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to shoot my arrows. And you can like just like super fast shoot arrows if you just press that button down a bunch. And I like shot him like six times in a row and he died immediately. I was like, cool. Didn't even die once. This was probably one of the more easier battles that I got to. Uh, so, yeah, happy with that. And then you get, like, this fairy girl or, like, this young girl that's, like, trapped in, like, a gemstone. She starts talking hoopla to you, like, oh, my God, you rescued me. But there's seven others that need to be rescued as well. There's eight of us that have been trapped 
by this evil villain and you have to rescue all of us to you know regain peace on earth or whatever it is i didn't really read it usually i read games but pretty sure i was drinking at the time when i uh, okay when i played it or i was i think i was watching game of thrones and yeah they just kind of tell you your story tell you the story you know and then yeah you got to save them but it was pretty cool everyone. graphics, like, seeing that, like, gemstone that she was trapped in, like, circle around, like, for a 16-bit game. I'm like, this is pretty cool. Um, Did you get to the next dungeon, then? Yeah, I did get to the next one. Well, before the first one, you go through, like, a uh, that grass maze. What would you think of that? Before the first one? Yeah, on your way to the first one. I forget it. Really? And you get the monkey? Oh yeah, the monkey. You gotta find the monkey in the trees. Yeah, in the bushes. Or and you whatever. can't, you can't get hurt, or the monkey like runs away. Oh really? Yeah, I kept like getting hit once or twice, and like he would run away. So eventually, I like cleared all the enemies out and went back for the monkey. And he asked you for like an obnoxious amount of money to open the gate. Hundred bucks or something. Yeah, hundred rubies. Rupees. Rubies. Yeah, with a P though. With a B. Okay. <laughs> Have you looked it up? No, but I'll look it up right now. I know it's a rupee. All right. Well, either way, that that was like a cute little thing to do. I hope to see that monkey again. It, it was weird. Like in the maze that you're in, uh, you can't really see your character, but then, like through like little like slits in in this grassy area, you do see. Uh, what are you showing me? What are you showing me? I just Googled currency in Zelda. Rupees. Oh, one P, two E's. Yeah, that looks right. All right, you won. <laughs> I know. What's that image of, though? That a, a rupee. It's actually currency in, like, India. Oh, interesting. It looks like a seashell or something. Yeah, well, it's probably, like, a clay or silver pressed coin. Yeah, it looks like it's silver. Yep, it's silver. Okay. Interesting. All right, Tony, you won. But yeah, it felt like someone was behind me when I was walking in that grassy area where you couldn't really see yourself. And then sure enough, when I popped out, I was like, oh, there's someone behind me. Yeah, a monkey. A monkey. Monkey see, monkey do. So I went to the second dungeon immediately. Um, you can open your map up and you see all eight places that you need to go to. Yeah, and they're actually numbered. I don't know if you have to do them in order, but I've been tackling them in order. So. Yeah, uh, sorry, my wife and sister are texting me right now, and it's bugging me out. Thanks, Aubrey. Thanks, Kayla. <laughs> um, yeah, I went to number two because I wasn't sure either, but I'm pretty positive that you can do them out of order. Some of them you need certain items to get to, the other ones, but uh, I went to two, which is down in the south swamp area. It essentially tells you, like, you, you start off in the light world, and uh, you read, or you go to the dark world, you go inside, you read this little thing, and it's like, what happens in the light world affects the dark world. So I'm like, alright, obviously, I need to go back to the light world. Go back to the light world, uh, the only thing you can do is pull that lever to unlock... Fill the, the water. Fill it yeah, back up. Fill yeah. up the stream. So you have to have the flippers by now um, to even go into this dungeon. So you go back to the dark world and you're able to, to traverse the caverns because of the waterways. Um, yeah, I think... Oh, uh, no, this one is a lot of water, huh? A lot of different water that you open up and, like, water shoots out and then you can swim through it. And it's pretty tricky. This one sort of bugged me out it was the most difficult like dungeon for me to find out where the hell i needed to go next yeah there's a lot of backtracking in it yeah just, uh, you it, gotta pay it was attention. frustrating definitely frustrating mm -hmm. but eventually figured it out i think uh we met up for dinner the other night and we were talking and you're like oh yeah i beat that dungeon yeah and i was like oh really I'm like, how did you do it? And you're like, I don't really know. I'm like, fuck. So, dude, it's so much. Like, you can't even. Yeah, there's so much you have to process. It's almost impossible, I think, to remember it. 
I agree. Um, but I was able to do it finally. Like literally it was the dumbest thing that I needed to do. There's like one switch that changes the blue blocks from up to down. Yeah. And, uh, I know exactly what uh, you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. And I knew it had to do something with that, but there's another room that you have to go to to have those blocks down, like the brown blocks down to then advance to get the master key. And uh, you get the hook shot, which comes in very handy. Yeah, I love it, man. I use it all the time. And I believe this is where the hook shot originated from was this game. I don't believe it was in the original one, Um, but I could be wrong about that. But you're able to shoot it out. It's like a chain thing that hooks onto like any item. So like skulls or pottery or whatever you can hook to. Yeah, so it'll like pull you across a riverbed or you know, like you any be gap or whatever. Or you can use it and actually pull an item towards you. Yeah. So like if you an enemy drops an item, you can pull it towards you. And you can uh, pull enemies towards you too, I believe. Um, I think it stuns them like the boomerang. Okay. But, well, yeah, I guess you do in this boss, you have to pull some of his kind of things. Yeah. So what did you think about this boss? Um, it wasn't the hardest one no. so far. It was more like a time-consuming one. Once you get the rhythm down of it, you know, you just had to pull the balls off him and... Yeah, so he's like defeat him as quick as you can, and then it's easy. He's like this one-eyed monster that has like a bunch of like little like cloud bubbles around him that are enemies as well. So you use the hook shot; it grabs an enemy, it pulls it close to you. You defeat that, and you just keep doing that until he's fully exposed. Then you just run up to him and kick the living shit out of him. Yeah, yeah. I found with a lot of the bosses I've fought. Um, it's good to like keep the sword out and be powering it up, and that way when you get close to him, you can do the spin attack. Yep. Or if you hit him, run into him, you don't get hurt, you know, because you got the sword out. Yeah, I agree. So I've found that's helped me out a lot. I agree. Um, after that, that's when I started playing West and Loathing, man. West of Loathing. Oh, really? I was just like, um, I need a break <laughs> from Zelda. So... Sorry, V Pixels. I don't have any more right now, but I plan on playing more. V Pixels eighty six, shout out to you. Uh she has been playing the game since I mentioned that we were gonna start playing this game and talk about it on our podcast. And it's really cool seeing her pro- progression uh throughout the game and our progression too and being able to talk about it here and there. Uh very cool. Yeah, so you also got the flute already, right? The yeah, I did. Ocarina of Time. I uh, I think it's just called the flute, but it sure does look like the ocarina. <laughs> well, it's the ocarina. I'm yeah. not I'm not sure yet what it does. Um, do you know? Well, I don't know everything it does, but I know one thing. What it makes music? Well, it does make music, <laughs> but I guess. Uh, some, I played it in front of this statue, and then this bird came out. But what I don't statue? know what it does. Um, in in the town. Yeah, I played it by the statue there. Oh, the the northeast. Yeah, yeah, west. Yeah, south. the directional one. Yep. And then some like seagull came out or something. Oh yeah, did it talk to you or what? I don't remember. Interesting. I don't remember what it does. Though. So you get it from the flute boy. He he says he buries it or whatever in the dark world. Yeah, so in the dark world, he's like a fox. Yeah. And he's sitting on the tree stump. And he's like, I got scared. So I buried buried my flute somewhere in the light world. Can you find it for me? And it's like, sure. He gives you a shovel. Um, And literally, it's in the same area, like, to the above him to the left in this like flower field and you just start digging around and eventually it pops out. And then you go back to the dark world and you give it to him there. And he's like, Oh my God, thank you. Can you uh, play a song for me? And you play it. And he's like, he turns into like wood, a tree. Yeah. He turns into a tree. So what's up with that on top of the stump? I don't know. 
I mean, what do you think the meaning is behind it? Fuck, I don't know. No meaning. Everything has a meaning. It's Does Nintendo. It I don't know. I think he like just sort of like gave up. Like he was just like, cool. Like my legacy will continue through you, Link. Like thank you. Like he, he I didn't really think about it too much. He didn't really like want to live anymore because he he got changed into like this fox thing. Well, that was only in the dark world. Everything is changed in the dark world, you know. Yes. So do you think? But he still remembers the light world. True. You know. So I think the dark world is just another dimension that only Link is able to go back and forth in. Yeah. Where other people can't. Like, they're trapped in this other dimension that their mind used to be in the light world, you know. But now it's in the dark world. So they still remember the light world era. That's a good theory. I like yeah. That. Um. So I think he just sort of, like, gave up on life and was just like, cool, like, you'll remember what to do with it, like, when the time comes, because yeah. he doesn't tell you what to do with it. Yeah. You figured it out, I guess. Well, I, I imagine. I don't know if that was, like, it was just a bird. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you, like, move that statue, and there's stairs down under it. Oh, really? In yeah. the light world or the dark world? I don't know. But eventually you get there. So, what's up with cutting grass and enemies coming out of it, popping out and attacking you? Oh, uh, I don't know, but that's a pain in the ass sometimes. Pain in the isn't dick. It? Yeah. It, it was happening to me all over. I was just like, this is crazy. Or you, like, step on a bomb or something. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, the dark world kicks my ass. It's insane. Well, the enemies come out of the grass in the light world also. Yeah, but it's more in the dark world, I feel like. And yeah, I think the dark world's definitely more difficult. Like way the enemies more difficult. are harder. Yeah. For sure. Way more difficult. Um but I mean, overall I'm really enjoying the game still. It's all seeming fairly new to me. So are you gonna go to Castle Three then or Dungeon Three in the Dark World? Yeah, I'm at three now, but I figure we'll save that for next okay. time when you're there also. Okay. I think I got to like the gate of it and went inside, but I haven't played anything. Yeah, three is uh, the dark woods, so maybe it's the dark, dark woods in the dark world. Ooh. But wouldn't it be the light woods if everything's like kind of reversed? Yeah. But the fog goes away once you find the master sword too. So is it still the dark woods? It's dark. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's still a dark. dark. Yeah. Just you know, it has that canopy of trees. Yeah. Who knows? Thick ass forest. Thick ass forest. Hell yeah. Anything else you got, Tony? No, man. I want to shout out uh, Gaming Podcast Alliance. It's a bunch of different podcasts. You can go to gamingpodcastalliance.com. You can see our podcast there and probably like nine to ten other gaming podcasts that are really cool people. Uh, We love talking to them, sharing ideas, and also listening to their podcasts. So. Give that a follow. Search it up, gamingpodcastalliance.com. Yeah, it's a great group of guys. And don't forget, we're doing a giveaway month long. So May 11th, we'll announce the winner. And buy some t-shirts, buy some hoodies, and you will be entered to win. Automatically entered. Yep. And uh, give us a follow on Instagram at Precisely Podcasts. And give me a follow at Bose underscore Game Room. And me at Precisely underscore Tony. Thank you, guys. We out. We out.